Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition here on the Game Professor channel. I'm your host, the Game Professor, and we are back on the Normandy after completing Eden Prime. We have a little bit of chatting to do before we go off to the Citadel. Let's start off with hey, Ashley. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. The crew could use some good news after what happened to Jenkins. Um, yeah, soldiers die. When your number comes up, it's over. His did. That's grim, Commander. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, though. Not after Torfin. That must have been hell. I definitely wouldn't say that you start to enjoy it. But yeah, it was necessary. I did what I had to do. You'd better be willing to do the same. I won't let the Alliance down, sir. And how are you holding up? Things were pretty rough down there. Are you okay? I've seen friends die before. It comes with being a Marine. But to see my whole unit wiped out. And you never get used to seeing dead civilians. But things would have been a lot worse if you hadn't have shown up. Um, this is where, even though I'm going more Renegade, I'm not going to deny the good work she did. We couldn't have done it without you, Williams. Thanks, Commander. I have to admit, I was a little worried about being assigned to the Normandy. It's nice when someone makes you feel welcome. Just hold yourself to the standard that I'm holding you to. Everyone on this ship has to do his or her part, Williams. Remember that. Understood, sir. Awesome. And yeah, that does get me Paragon points, but... Grand scheme of things, I'm not that bothered by that. Let's, uh, well, first off, let's open our locker, see what we get, and, um, yeah, let's talk to Dr. Chakwas. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? This is technically a conversation that you could have with her at any point in the game, but it just makes sense to have it now. I don't think I technically ever had it with her in the other playthrough. So let's find out about her background. How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. Earth always seemed boring to me, too safe, too secure. I figured the colonies were teeming with exotic adventure. I wanted to travel the stars, tending the wounds of tough soldiers with piercing eyes and sensitive souls. <laughs> Turns out military life isn't quite as romantic as I'd imagined. Hmm. But humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse. And the Alliance always needs good doctors. So I stayed on to do my part. I like her. I, I've always liked Dr. Chakwas. She's a, a really good kind of just background to have on the... Or backbone, as it were, to have on the ship. Ever think you made the wrong choice? Sometimes I think about opening a private practice back on Earth, or maybe taking a position at one of the new med centers out in the colonies. But there's something special about working on soldiers. If I left the Alliance now, I'd feel like I was abandoning them. All right. I guess that makes sense. Uh, what do you know about Captain Anderson? What do you know about Captain Anderson? I've served with him for a few tours now. He knows when to let things slide and when to crack the wheel. The crew knows he's seen pretty much anything they'll ever run into. And he cares about the people under his command. And ultimately, I've always felt that that's the, the kind of shepherd that I've tried to create. And that will be the same here, even with the renegade lean. And this is just some background we can get on Caden. This is one of the reasons why I feel like they really did Caden dirty in, in this first game. They make a point of doing a lot of background for him, but don't do anything <coughs> with it. Pardon me. How well do you know the lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission, but he has an impressive service record, over a dozen special commendations. Tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headaches. It's not easy being an L2. What's that? What does that have to do with it? Well, most biophics now use the L3 implants. Lieutenant Alenko was wired with the old L2 configuration. Sometimes there are complications. Such as? What kind of complications? Severe mental disabilities, insanity, crippling physical pain. There's a long list of horrific side effects. Caden's lucky. 
He just gets migraines. Well, in the grand scheme of all those things, I would say yes, Caden is very lucky, but migraines are terrible. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. It was actually migraines that helped us realize that I needed glasses. Us meaning my family. But let's chat with Caden as well. Glad to see you're okay, Commander. All right. He has nothing else left to say for him, so I guess we'll just go off to Joker to get ourselves into port at the Citadel. Man. There are just little bits of detail that have added just so much more to this setting. Like, little tiny things. I expect that a single person is not even going to be able to fully realize every single visual change that they made to this first game. It's really impressive. Good timing, Commander. I was just about to bring us into the Citadel. See that taxpayer money at work. All right. Always good. That's my favorite thing to do. See taxpayer money at work. We get our iconic Citadel music. Size isn't everything. Why so touchy, Joker? I'm just saying you need firepower too. <laughs> Look at that monster. Its main gun could rip through the barriers in any ship in the Alliance fleet. Good thing it's on our side then. Citadel Control, this is SSV Normandy requesting permission to land. Stand by for clearance, Normandy. <laughs> clearance granted. You may begin your approach. Transferring you to an Alliance operator. Roger, Alliance Tower. Yeah. Normandy, this is Alliance Tower. Please proceed to Dark 422. I still think that they put those lines out of order. And it, it does still bug me. But. I suppose the fact that they didn't change the order in this remake should be an indication that it was correct. Even though it doesn't sound correct at all. <laughs> And should we write with Udina? This is an outrage! The Council would step in if the Geth attacked a Turian colony? The Turians don't found colonies on the borders of the Terminus systems, Ambassador. Humanity was well aware of the risks when you went into the Traverse. What about Seren? You can't just ignore a rogue specter. I demand action! <coughs> you don't get to make demands of the Council, Ambassador. Citadel Security is investigating your charges against Saren. We will discuss the CSEC findings at the hearing, not before. Captain Anderson, I see you brought half your crew with you. Just the ground team from Eden Prime, in case you had any questions. I have the mission reports. I assume they're accurate? They are. Sounds like you convinced the Council to give us an audience. They were not happy about it. Seren's their top agent. They don't like him being accused of treason. I apologize for the coughing. I <coughs> just have something stuck in my throat, apparently, that is just moving enough <laughs> to cause irritation. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're blind. I'm not going to sit on my ass just because the council doesn't want to do anything. If they won't stop Saren, I will. Settle down, Commander. You've already done more than enough to jeopardize your candidacy for the Spectres. The mission on Eden Prime was a chance to prove you could get the job done. Instead, Nihilus ended up dead and the beacon was destroyed. That's Saren's fault, not his. Then we better hope the CSEC investigation turns up evidence to support our accusations. Otherwise, the Council might use this as an excuse to keep you out of the Spectres. And that would be Come stupid. with me, Captain. I want to go over a few things before the hearing. Shepard, you and the others can meet us at the Citadel Tower, top level. I'll make sure you have clearance to get in. 
And that's why I hate politicians. I'm right there with you. Ashley, right there with you. And obviously, at this point, all we can do is go to the Citadel Tower to get started on this. I'm fairly certain it won't even let us go anywhere else. But, uh, Alliance Patrol Report, Cat... Captain Hendrickson reported some unusual energy readings during a patrol of the Argus Row Cluster. She had particular concerns about the Hydra system, but was recalled before her team could investigate further. No patrols are scheduled for that sector. Do we want to send in a recon team? Argus Row. Hmm. I don't remember which one that is. But... I am basically just going to go straight to the Citadel Tower rather than talking to people and doing stuff. Mostly because this is one of those points in the story where I don't see much point in going against the main path that it is presenting for you. I will talk to Avina this time, though, because I never talked to Avina in the last playthrough, so we'll talk to her this time. Greetings, and welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina, and I am pleased to be your virtual guide throughout this level of the Citadel Space Station. Virtual guide? What does that mean? I am a fully interactive virtual intelligence. Program to provide spontaneous guidance at predetermined locations of interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals, should you require assistance. Okay. Give me the tour. You are standing at Presidium Tourism Terminal 1. On either side of this lobby are the embassies of the various Citadel races, along with CSEC headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, where the Council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. Okay. What can you tell me about the Council? What can you tell me about the Citadel Council? Originally, the Council consisted of representatives from the Asari and Salarians, the two dominant species in Citadel space. Roughly 1,304 galactic standard years ago, Turians were invited to join the Council in recognition of the role they played during the Krogan Rebellion. Since then, the three Council races have worked together to ensure the peaceful coexistence of the galactic community while preserving individual autonomy for each species. It does sound a little too perfect. It can't be as simple as that. There must be problems somewhere in the system. I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. I'm not gonna lie though, just the fact that she can, that it can make that statement specifically and say, I'm not, I can't make that kind of qualified judgment tells me that there's more to it in general um, and as we'll learn more about the Citadel and stuff as the game goes on uh, it uh, can be a little bit more questionable even than that um, what can you tell me about the uh, about CSEC I want to know more about Citadel security Citadel security serves as law enforcement for all regions of the Citadel, though the majority of officers serve in the ward. Mm. Executor Palin, a Turian, is the current head of CSEC, but individuals from virtually every species across Citadel space serve as officers beneath him. If you wish to learn more, Executor Palin's office is located in the CSEC headquarters just across the okay. lobby. Okay. He's actually somebody I might try to talk to before we go to the tower. Just because I'm curious. Do you know anything about Spectres? The term Spectre is derived from the branch of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance. Each Spectre agent is handpicked by the Council. Their primary role is preserving galactic stability and resolving volatile situations that cannot be handled through normal political channels. In this role, they are granted extraterritorial rights and jurisdictions. Spectre's answer to no law or authority except the council itself. Okay. But the council does control them. So that that gives a little bit more insight into the the powers that be in regard to Spectre's at the very least. Um, 
certainly more than the speculation that Jenkins and Dr. Chakwas were doing at the very beginning of the game. Tell me about the embassies. Each species in Citadel space important enough to be consulted on matters of galactic important politics enough. maintains an embassy on the Presidium. The Volus were the first non-council species to be granted an embassy, roughly 2,384 galactic standard years ago. As Citadel space has expanded, more embassies have been added. The most recently added embassy belongs to your own species, humanity. It was added 19 galactic standard years ago, despite some rather vocal opposition. Um, yeah, why were the Volas first? How come the Volas were the first species given an embassy? In the early years following the formation of the Council, the Volus were, apart from the Usari and Salarians, the most populous and widespread species in Citadel space. They established many new colonies and trading outposts, and they petitioned the Council for a greater role in determining interstellar policy. In recognition of their work to expand interstellar trade and establish a standardized galactic economy, the Volus were granted an embassy here on the Citadel. Okay. And why was humanity opposed? Why were people trying to keep my species out? Some species felt humanity was given preferential treatment. It often takes a century or more before a new species is granted an embassy. Hmm. The Council gave a great deal of thought to this matter. In the end, they decided humanity's impact on Citadel space was significant enough to warrant an embassy. Okay. I'm not going to ask what Avina thinks because I know what the answer is going to be. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thank you for using Avina. Please enjoy your visit to the Citadel. Okay. And yeah, like I said, I'm I'm curious just to see if Executor Palin has anything to say to us. Commander Shepard, I didn't expect to see you here. Did Ambassador Udina send you? Uh, who are you? Have we met before? No, but I know you well enough. I'm Executor Palin, head of CSEC. It's my job to know when someone like you arrives on the Citadel. Ah. Was there something you needed, Commander? Um. What can you tell me about CSEC? Tell me about CSEC. CSEC provides necessary police and security services throughout the Citadel. We're a civilian government agency, though many of our members have had military training. Of course, as the seasick representative to the council, I spend most of my time liaising between the two. Okay, that makes sense. What do you know about specters? What do you know about the specters? They're the right hand of the council, or so they like to be called. More like the underhanded side of the council. Hmm, you don't like them. What do you have against the specter? I can't abide any organization that considers itself above the law. Okay. Especially when it's left up to each individual specter to decide when and how to bend the rules. Okay. I'm not going to say that that's naive, but... Because I, I see his point. Um, but it is very... Uh, it, it, yet another element that just kind of gives a little bit more insight into the specters as a whole. I get the feeling you're not too fond of humans. No, I just don't trust your kind. Not yet. You humans are eager to take all the power you can get, and you're being given a lot. Mm -hmm. If the Council wants to make humanity their new favorite pet, that's their business. But I don't have to like it. Okay. I'm not going to say we're not favorites, because really, as of now, I have no reason to say that. Um... Let's see if he can give us any insight into the investigation. Tell me about your investigation into Saren. Sorry, Commander. I don't make a habit of giving out details about ongoing investigations. Okay. That's understandable. I'll be going now. Goodbye, Commander. I'll be going now. That's a different one for Shepard. Very interesting. I feel like there's a little bit more time to press the buttons in this version. 
but here we have a diplomatic advisory warning. The following message was transmitted from an untraceable account to multiple recipients across the extranet. Further monitoring of the situation is warranted. My fellow biotic, you have been selected to receive this transmission because of our shared plight. Few understand us, fewer tolerate us. We must stand together. We must build our own new world. Come join us in the Hawking Eta Cluster. Only as one body can we right the wrongs done to our kind. Okay. I have two thoughts of what that could be. And I've never actually made the connection distinctly. Don't believe the rumors. The consort would never reveal hmm. her secrets. Of course she wouldn't. She'd be talked at the nearest airlock if she did. Uh, I suppose. Besides, Nick, the consort's nothing like the girls back on the colonies. <laughs> she's... she's... You don't have to do it with her. You can just talk to her if you want. Is that all you did, Jazz? Just talk? Huh. I didn't say that. Ha! <laughs> I bet you did too. Shut up, Fredericks. Let's see what these guys are talking about. What do you want? Oh, Commander. Hmm. Is there something I can do for you? Relax, Private. This isn't an inspection. Right. Sorry. What can I do for you, Commander? Who's the consort? What can you tell me about the Asari consort? I, uh... Well, she's an Asari who works here as... That is, she helps people with... things. You never want to see her, did you, Fredericks? I, uh... Hmm. No, I never did. I couldn't afford it. It costs half a year's credits just to go in and talk to her. Where is she? Can you at least tell me where I can find her? Sure. She's across the bridge from the embassies. Thanks, kid. Have fun. Try not to get into too much trouble. I will. Have fun, that is. Now, obviously, we have no context for needing to know who the consort is, but it's just kind of interesting to hear that background. And I don't think I ever talked to the bartender last time either. So let's do that. Hello, Commander. Can I get you something? Commander? You know who I am? Your arrival uh, created a bigger than average stir among the diplomats and hangers on around here. Okay. There's always something new happening around here. I could fill you in on some points of interest if you'd like. Sure, let's do that. What's going on around here? Well, you found the embassies. Not much going on here. Across the bridge, you'll find the bank, the Emporium, and Shaira's. If you haven't heard of her, you soon will. If you need supplies, you can try the markets one level below. For entertainment, I try Flux or Cora's Den. Tell me more about Shaira's. What is Shaira's? The consort? Uh, she entertains clients who can afford her services. Most of the diplomats and ambassadors have visited her at one time or another. Okay. She's a very powerful woman, but also very respected. Okay. I'd say that this is a more accurate representation of Shaira rather than the uh, <laughs> than Frederick's perspective. Tell me about Flux and Cora's Den. Well, Flux has gambling and dancing, certainly more lively than this place. Cora's Den, on the other hand, well, let's just say it's livelier and deadlier all at the same time. All right. Got some good information there. Goodbye. So long, Commander. Have a pleasant day. I appreciate the traditional role of a bartender being the ear to the ground, as it were. But let's... Let's uh, get over to the council. Can finish off the episode with chatting with them. Pretty sure that should work out timing wise pretty perfectly. There definitely feels. It, it feels more alive, I feel like, than in the original. There's something slightly better about the animations for all of the various overworld NPCs that definitely feels a little bit more alive. 
Don't have the preaching Hanar yet, so that's good. Got any, I got a keeper here. Please do not disturb the keepers. Okay. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 2. You are standing near the base of the Citadel Tower, one of the Presidium's most recognizable and important structures. Behind me is the spectacular Relay Monument, a scale model representation of a Prothean mass huh. relay. To your left is one of the Keepers, the enigmatic caretakers of the Citadel, working on a control panel. You may see Keepers involved in various tasks throughout all levels of the Citadel. We ask that you do not interfere with them in any way. The Keepers are essential to the smooth operation of the Citadel. Obstructing their daily work will result in harsh penalties, including incarceration and rehabilitation. All right. Um, the fact that Avina specifically mentions the keeper beside it is uh, interesting. It makes me think that that keeper is permanently there. I'd like to know more about the keepers. Little is known about these peaceful servants of the Citadel though they are essential to the operation and maintenance of the entire station. Hmm. Citadel regulations protect the Keepers against interference during the performance of their tasks. Failure to comply will result in harsh penalties. Keepers can be seen in all sections of the Citadel, but are typically found in and around the tower. Why here? Any particular reason there are so many Keepers in this area? The Keepers do not communicate with other species. It is assumed, however, that the tower houses the Citadel's primary control systems. Okay. Many of the station systems, such as navigation and life support, function automatically. It is believed the Keepers operate those systems from inside the tower's inaccessible core. The Keepers also make hmm. frequent appearances in the Council Chamber itself, though they appear to be just passing through on their way to some other destination. Very interesting. What can you tell me about the monument? Tell me about the Relay Monument. Discovered by the Asari who first arrived at the Citadel, the Relay Monument is one of the station's most interesting and controversial features. What is the meaning behind this striking piece of art? Is it a tribute to Prothean vanity? A reminder of their conquest of the galaxy through mass relay technology? Or perhaps it is a symbol of unity? A Prothean acknowledgement that the relays would eventually lead other species here hmm. to the Citadel? No one can say for sure making the Relay Monument a favorite topic of discussion among academics and scholars. Definitely something interesting to keep in mind. I'm glad that I'm choosing to speak to Avina this time. I, I never, never speak to Avina. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm getting more information than I ever thought I would. Tell me about the Citadel Tower. Housing both the Council Chambers and Citadel Control, the tower is one of the most important buildings on the station. Access to these areas is restricted to those with the appropriate clearance. Tell me about Citadel Control. What happens in Citadel Control? Citadel Control handles all incoming and outbound transit. Every hmm. ship within 2,000 kilometers of the Citadel is under the jurisdiction of Citadel Control. At peak capacity, they are responsible for monitoring upwards of a thousand vessels. Okay. And what can you tell me about the chambers? I'd like to hear more about the council chambers. The business of the council, which often has far-reaching effects on the galactic community, is conducted in a room at the apex of the Citadel Tower. The council chambers themselves are truly a magnificent sight to behold, though few get to experience the view in person. Typically, only the councillors, ambassadors, and high-ranking officials, along with various support staff, are allowed access. Yeah, why isn't it open to the public? What if someone has business with the council? The average citizen must go through the proper channels if they wish an audience with the council. This is usually arranged through their respective ambassadors. Even then, few are given access to the actual council chambers. In most cases, the ambassador acts on behalf of the citizen. Alright. So, I'd say that's, uh... That's all we need. I'm not gonna say I've been asked to go there because I don't think Avina needs to know That's that. That's all for now. Thank you for using Avina. I mean, Have a pleasant day. Heck, it might already know it. 
so up we go the council isn't going to ask me any questions are they i doubt it we've made our reports now we just have to trust ambassador udina no we don't sir all right that is considerably faster than the elevators of the past. And I think we are actually going to stop our discussion or stop the episode with this little interaction with Garrus. So let's do that. Saren's hiding something. Give me more time. Stall them. Stall the council. Don't be ridiculous. Your investigation is over, Garrus. Okay. Commander Shepard, Garrus Vicarian. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Saren. What did you find? Come across anything I should know about? Saren's a specter. Most of his activities are classified. I couldn't find anything solid. Hmm. But I know he's up to something. Like you humans say, I feel it in my gut. I think the Council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. Alright. Sounds like a plan. And hopefully... Fingers crossed is, I think, the best we can do with that. Wow. I have been watching some other streams and stuff. And I'm even still more blown away by how everything looks playing it myself. But, like I said, we are going to finish off right here just before going up to see the council. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you always know when I have new videos coming out. And follow the links in the description to the Facebook page and Discord server so you can join the conversation. But until next time, everybody, this is your Game Professor, signing off. I will see you then.